Lock and Key Season 3 Ending Explained Well, the final season is here. With the arrival of Captain Gideon in the final episode of Season 2, it was clear that he had a plan in place to destroy the world as we knew it and open up the doorway to beyond. With this season only coming in at 8 episodes and the runtime being slightly more digestible, I thought I'd recap, break down and explain all that there was to take away from the final season of the show. So let's get into it. Here is Lock and Key Season 3 Ending Explained. Just to let you know, this video will contain spoilers. The final season opened up with us seeing the episode that centered around the snow globe. Whilst not thinking much of it at the time, it focused on one of the main things in the show, and this was of Bodhi being trapped and separated from his family for the most part of the season. However, we did see him getting rescued from the snow globe and the trickery of the two sisters, Dorothy and Ada, within the first episode. There were two main threats throughout the show. We had Captain Gideon, who had arrived in this world and had the aim of retrieving all of the keys off of the Locke family in the Keyhouse Manor, with the intention of opening the doorway to beyond, and to have the Dark World take over this world as we knew it. The way for him to make this possible was to collect all of the keys. He saw early on that the more keys that he had in his possession, the stronger and larger the opening got. Along with this threat, we also had Bodhi, who found the Time Shift key in Episode 2, and he kept going back in time to moments of his family's history where he then encountered the battle that occurred in the previous season of the show. But by accident, he brought Dodge back into his timeline, due to the fact that she had a hold of him, and she then took over his body once he turned into a ghost. Tyler returned back to the house after becoming an adult, and it was apparent that he didn't remember any of the events that unfolded in the past, due to the fact that you forget all about the magic when you become an adult. However, he decided that after a short while, he wanted to know of everything in the past, this was after seeing some flashbacks which became present after being slightly intoxicated, and also due to the gap in knowledge in events that were there between himself and his family, and the rift it was causing between them. They used the memory key in order to allow him to see all of the events that unfolded before, and access the magic of the past. And from this moment on, he was then familiar with his past, and was able to assist in the stopping of the captain getting all of the keys, and also the mission to get Bodhi his body back after the family found out that it wasn't him inside of his own body. We'd got to a point in the show where we then saw Sam as a ghost, where Bodhi was stuck, and he assisted Bodhi with the help and intention of getting him back to his normal body. He trained him on how to use the birds to his advantage, and to get them to do as he wanted them to do. This enabled Kinsey to get the animal key off of Captain Gideon after all of the birds that Bodhi was controlling from beyond were attacking the captain. This then enabled him to return to the real world in his human form. We saw Dodge as Bodhi get taken back to her own timeline because of the safeguard that was in place on the grandfather clock. This was the timer that was in place to essentially send anything back to its original timeline, in case anything went wrong. I did feel like Dodge being brought back to the show felt like a little bit of a wasted opportunity, and was very inconsequential. We saw that she wanted the keys, and that she did basically switch sides at the end and help the family, but she was taken back to her timeline before she could even carry out what she intended on doing, so it felt a bit like a waste of time to be honest. After Gideon had what he thought was all of the keys, Bolton, one of Gideon's echoes, was tasked with retrieving the final key that was needed in order to allow the two worlds to collide, as it turned out that one was missing, and stopping the master plan from going ahead. We saw him enter the ghost door and set out to retrieve it after being misled by Tyler and Kinsey, as they made out that they knew where it was, but they didn't. Upon Bolton's return, it turned out that Sam the ghost had actually escaped the ghost door, and took over Bolton's body without Gideon knowing, and then this became another pair of hands to help the Locke family keep the keys out of the hands of Gideon. We saw earlier on in the episode that Ellie was aware of the final key due to the shot that we had of her when it was mentioned, but she didn't state anything, not until it was in a consequential position. She had stated that it was inside of Gordy's head, and she needed to go to his house to be able to retrieve it. This was when we then got the flashback to when Rendell and Ellie were younger, and we saw that he'd seen them using the creation key, which is what one could argue is one of the most powerful keys that there is. It essentially allowed anything that was drawn to be able to come to life and become a tangible thing. Back in the day, they entered Gordy's mind and hid the key inside there. We saw Gordy get hurt by Gideon as he forced Ellie to go there, and as he was losing blood and slowly dying, we saw them enter his mind by using the mind key. Along with this, we saw Tyler, Kinsey, and Sam in Bolton's body enter his mind, and looked to retrieve the key as well. 
Ellie did find the key whilst she was in there after managing to lose Gideon. We saw Bolton as a way of further supporting Sam's arc of redemption. He decided to stay behind and fight Gideon off. We saw Gordy's memory flashing up on screen in front of us and causing the inside of his mind to become confused and lose sense of direction. If the group got stuck in there, then they would have died. I thought the different memories and the way that it was shown stylistically on screen was a nice touch, as it was in line with what is often referred to as your life flashing before your eyes when you're about to die. They all managed to get out other than Sam, which I thought was a fitting way for the character to go. His arc of redemption was complete, and despite the fact he may not have been forgiven for killing Rendell, he served his purpose in trying to make up for it in helping the family. Once this was done, we saw Nina and Bodhi trying to get into the Harlequin chest, where Gideon had all of the keys contained. Most importantly, the Alpha Key that was needed to defeat Captain Gideon, to be able to separate the demon from the individual. However, there was one problem. The chest was guarded with magic. Due to the fact that Kinsey and Tyler had retrieved the Creation Key, Kinsey was able to use the magic on the magical protection that was on the chest, and she was able to draw a door and retrieve the key. She managed to do so, and as she was being held over the doorway to beyond, she stuck it in Captain Gideon, and you started to see the demon coming out of him. This was then when he himself was pushed back to where he came from, along with a few of the keys that he had in his possession. This saw the gateway get smaller, and the realization that if all of the keys were destroyed, then it would close. But if they were to keep a hold of them, then it would forever stay open no matter how strong of a barrier that they built. We saw the family was in mutual agreement other than Bodhi, who wanted to do one more thing before they destroyed all of the keys. They went back in time using the time shift key and spoke with Rendell from a few years ago, and they informed him of what they were going to do. He mentioned how being part of a family and being with all of them is the most magical thing that there could possibly be, and that the keys are not needed when something far more powerful exists. We heard earlier on in the episode that humans using keys were for their own vanity, and it was something that was carried through as an underlying theme. By destroying the keys, it would allow the opening to get smaller, and would be the most selfless thing that they could have done. After the family reunion, once they'd returned to their original timeline, we saw that Nina used the memory key on both Kinsey and Bodhi, so when they became adults, they'd be able to remember all of what happened throughout their life when it came to magic. Once that was done, they then threw all of the keys away, destroying them and closing the gateway between the two worlds. After this, we cut to a time period a little bit further in the future, where we saw Kinsey had released her movie and it was having a successful run at the local cinema. We saw Scott arrive as a surprise, and they shared a kiss on screen, after Kinsey mentioned how she may transfer to the UK for her film studies. We had Nina with her history teacher boyfriend Josh, who got wrapped up into this mess of the magic in the episode. It looked like they were embarking on living a life together, we had Ellie going back to be the coach at the school and being met with a positive response, after not caring what people thought or said about her. Tyler was moving to Montana whilst looking like he was going to be with the love interest that we saw on screen, Carly. He'd battled with internal demons in feeling responsible for Jackie's death in season 2, but it felt like he came to terms with it and decided to move on and live his life. And we also had Bodhi, who was suffering from a similar mindset, the grief of the loss of his father, Something that he couldn't get over, but by going back in time and seeing him with his family, he was able to speak with him and in the present day, we saw that he was prepared to strike up a bond with Josh, something we hadn't seen throughout the entirety of the show, showing that he himself had come to terms with it and was ready to move on. In the final shot of the season, we saw the family go inside the infamous house one last time, where Bodhi stopped and said, Can you hear that? Nothing. For the first time, they were living a normal life where magic wasn't at the center of it, and the keys that ruled the family for generations were no longer there. A happy ending was present. We did have the whispering being the final thing that we heard on screen, but I don't think it meant that there was still the possibility that there was anything there. I think it was just a nod to what once was and all that had happened. So, there you have it. Lock and Key Season 3, ending explained. What did you think of Lock and Key Season 3? Leave a comment down below, and don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you next time.